Hi, welcome to Rapid Art. Today I'm going to be talking to Deborah Mitchell. Deborah Mitchell um, is retired from teaching. Uh, she was a, a college teacher at a School of Mines and Technology for a number of years. Um, I, her main focus lately, I believe, is printmaking. Um, she has just premiered along with other uh, members of the Black Hills arts community, a video about her process and her studio. The video is available on the Dolls website and look under events when you get to the homepage. I wasn't sure where to look and I spent quite a bit of time trying to find all the videos. So it's under events, the events tab is where you're gonna find it. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell everybody? about, um, I mean, like as a way of introduction that I'm- Yes, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Um, well, what we're, what that, the whole video was about is Fall Colors Art Studio Tour has, this would have been our third year of, you know, physical visiting art studios throughout the Black Hills. And so as a group, um, we thought, you know, we're gonna not, we're not gonna stop. So we thought we'd do uh, virtual tours. So everybody that was part of the tour, there was 11 of us. And, you, and when you go to the doll website, you can see the full list and everybody's video. And they're about two minutes. So it doesn't take a lot of your time, but it gives you a really nice insight into the diversity of art that's taking place in the Black Hills. And uh, it was really exciting. But I have been working on my garden all summer long and I tried really hard to get a show in here of diverse people, not just my work. And people were just still a little bit reluctant and they wondered how their art would fare being outside. And so the, I, I even put out a call for entry for art that might've been uh, affected by weather. And I didn't, I got like three people interested. So I just canned that. So when FCAST, which is Fall Colors Art Studio Tour mm -hmm. came about, I said to the members, hey, let's do a kickoff in my backyard. It is completely fenced. Everything is going to be secure. Make it so I can pull it in if it's gonna rain. And um, it's large enough back here so we, we could, practice social distancing. So that's basically um, how the FCAS kickoff uh, tour started. And that was um, last Friday, Friday before last. And um, it was really fun. And Paul, of course, played his music and had his amazing paintings. And it, it was just a great, great event. Um, not as many people as we had hoped, but um, yeah, so, I feel like we were trying to make a positive spin on everything that's going on in terms of, you know, how the art worlds and, you know, selling and galleries and online stuff is, is, you know, taking place and really changing the dynamic of how, how do we, how do we make a living as artists and how do we bring people to our art to see it other than just, you know, our website. So I think the FCAST virtual tours really helps with that. And then they will live on on our individual websites. Right. And so um, one of the, that's kind of um, what these interviews are supposed to, you know, kind of focus on is how artists are maybe adapting. Maybe, you know, we'll get a few of these interviews um, archived and it might help people figure out a way to kind of navigate uh, a path into a future that, you know, at, at this point looks like this thing could be hanging around for a while. And yeah. so unfortunately, um, and um, so I guess one of the things that artists in the Black Hills have done have taken events like the fall studio tour, and they've just kind of adapted, changed them a little bit to kind of make it safer, make it accessible mm -hmm. to everyone and mm -hmm. um, just carry on. Yeah, so yeah, we gotta carry on. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I don't know, like a positive out of this might be that I think in the, have the videos haven't been part of previous FCasts, have they? No, 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 not at all. People would drive through the hills. It was, a, you know, usually yeah. the, it's always the 
third weekend in September. So we've been lucky with weather. It's been cool sometimes, but you know, we've been, um, it's always beautiful. People are driving through the hills anyway and um, to look at the colors. And so it's been really positive. Um, I don't really know how it's translated in terms of sales, but I know that I have had a lot more people that, you know, I ask people to sign up on my uh, mailing list. So I, you know, I, I had more people that were able to, to get my um, mailings. Although I have to admit that with COVID, I haven't really had a yeah, lot. <laughs> really hard to translate your activity as an artist directly into sales sometimes. I mean, yeah. I, I have a hard time, <laughs> like say <laughs> I did, I did X and Y and I ended up with, you know. Oh, absolutely. Being, absolutely. Because but, we just I mean, do it because we have to do yeah. it. I mean, there's, we have no choice, you know, so, I know when I stop for whatever reason, um, I've, I just, I'm not happy. People around me aren't happy. <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, like every, every spring I kind of ask myself, or I, I have throughout the years, do you want to travel or do you want to plant a garden? And I have traveled a lot and my art is informed by my travels a lot. In fact, the last five years I've been looking at gardens internationally, um, Turkey, Italy, Greece, places like that and you know New York City and 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 then coming back home and creating work based upon my um, impressions and this year it was like mm, that decision was made for me and so I thought well why don't I create my own garden and that's what I did I worked really hard um, you know moving soil putting up mm -hmm. fences all by myself and I was exhausted but it was perfect a perfect way to kind of power through like this confusion of, you know, so here we are sitting around waiting for whatever, <laughs> a vaccine or somebody to stop by mm -hmm. so we can s speak to each other through masks. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what happened in terms of what I did in my backyard. And that's why I brought my computer outside. So you could kind of get a glimpse of what's mm -hmm. going on back there. <laughs> oh um, yeah. Yeah. If um you missed out on the on the reception for the fall the FCAS tour, it was really great. And and uh, I mean a big part of it is just was hanging out in Deb's backyard. It was well, thank you. Uh, just a, a nice uh, nice weekend. Okay, so you're we're all you know this is part of talking to artists about this. I had. I've had a kind of a, it's easier, it seems for me to talk to the mu musicians because musicians, you know, I mean, they might be at home in their studios practicing, but at some point, usually, you know, I guess as a musician, you end up performing and performing usually involves people and it involves, mm -hmm. you know, like hopefully lots of people. Um, yeah. But like with artists, it seems like we're kind of built for this whole thing for uh dealing for the, with a pandemic <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> you know, absolutely um i and, agree but i was wondering okay so in your video you mentioned that your artwork is in kind of inspired by this balancing act between nature and um culture yeah yeah or a uh, nature and i'm sorry i might have missed up but you know no, no that, that's right? it you know okay so since you're maybe not out in the world as much, um, has that caused your work to come from a place that's more personal, maybe more more of an interior kind of space? Or, I mean, has it affected it at all? Or, I mean, maybe you have enough past experiences traveling that it doesn't. Um, well, uh, what I found yeah. I did this summer was more work from observation, um, okay. the flowers in my garden. And um, uh, I mean, I have a lot, a whole lot of ideas that I've, and photographs that I've filed away. And I am really actually looking forward to this winter so that I can just be in my studio. Frankly, having a garden is exhausting. Every day you gotta get out there, you gotta water, you gotta weed. And then, 
I threw a puppy, a new dog. Not oh, really, yeah. I call her puppy. I called, um, I threw a dog into the mix. And she needs a walk every day, which also mm. saved me in terms of like feeling, um, you know, feeling healthy. And it's really healthy eating out of my garden. And um, yeah, so I've been, I've been, I mean, I guess I don't know if, if that answers your question, but I remember like when I was younger, I always felt like I had one foot on the boat and one foot on the dock. I, I grew up outside of Boston and I love to go into the Museum of Fine Arts, but mm -hmm. we would also go to the coast of Maine or go into the, um, you know, hiking in, in New Hampshire and skiing. So, uh, you know, I had both things. My mother was very much into classical music, my dad into jazz, and then my dad would take us on adventures, outdoor adventures. So, um, yeah, so that's just kind of, I'm just continuing on that that trajectory i guess how how's the puppy doing puppy she had, is amazing she had kind of a rough week i know that she did she had a very rough week and um she is healing <laughs> up she oh that's yeah, good. It, went, Man. it went on and on that's a whole story in fact she is so sweet and has i have so many photographs her of her i'm thinking of doing maybe a, a little book on maybe a children's book and I'm going to call it Lale, the hard luck pup. Okay. <laughs> it will kind of illustrate some of her trials and tribulations. Well, you know, that's one thing that I've done the last three, four months is that when uh, my daughter, you know, when my daughter was growing up, I would, you know, tell her stories and we would get ideas for stories. And I kind of kept a notebook of all these things. Oh, nice. And, um, having that extra time I actually went through the notebooks and kind of started to um to maybe edit and do some more mm -hmm. writing and I don't know which is kind of an odd thing I don't know what I was I mean it hadn't occurred to me to do that you know in 10 years but yeah um it just seemed like uh it was important for some reason to work on some of that stuff yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, is you know one thing. Okay, we've kind of talked about how this might be affecting our lives as you know artists in the kind of a publicly like when we're, we need to get out promote our work. So we're doing it maybe more online, and mm -hmm. we talked about in the studio a little bit our private time that uh, mm -hmm. most artists need so much of, and um, is so like. One question I've been trying to ask everybody is, is there one thing about your work that maybe you would like everybody to know, but you never really hear anybody talk about or mention, you know, like that thing, you know, that thing that um, is part of your work that you're really proud of, you're really is really happy with that's really special to you but maybe like when you're standing in the gallery listening to people talk about your work you probably do that don't you kind of eavesdrop a little bit no i'm afraid like, to oh I, do. <laughs> <clears throat> I like to wander around a gallery when i have a show up and listen to the random I'll, comments I'll remember that next time okay but um <laughs> yeah be careful um but yeah just that you know one thing that like if you were listening to people talk about your work, you'd be like, oh, wait, you missed that. What was the, you know, I've got this really cool thing about my work and you missed it. Huh. Of course, you probably talk about it in your artist statement, maybe. Well, you know, I, I guess the, the the thing is that I, um, I have so many different techniques and approaches and styles and yeah. subject matter that I don't think that there's anything I I don't know. Maybe I would appreciate. Uh, I would appreciate if they could appreciate um, how diverse my different series are. And um, I mean, I can draw. I have an MFA in printmaking. My painting's so-so, and I'm going to work on that this winter. Um, I don't know. I really. I don't know. I. So I can't answer that. Yeah, I think part of it is sometimes like. Um part of that might be like a, how much work really goes into a show 
or goes into any one piece mm -hmm. of work. And even if it's like a, a quick monotype or a quick, you know, mm -hmm. sketch, whatever, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, life drawing. There's a lot of drawing from nature. There's a lot of sitting around, mm -hmm. you know, brainstorming and thinking that yeah. oh, years and yeah. years of uh, thought have gone into even some of the, what may appear to be, um, you know, brief, ephemeral kind of gestures. You, you know, know? That, that brings to mind the, the story. Many people, I'm sure, have heard it. Uh, this man was looking at a, um, a drawing by Matisse, and it was like five lines that made this beautiful woman's face. And um, the guy said, said to Matisse, well, how much is that? And Matisse told him. He said, really? How long did that take you? And Matisse said, my whole life. <laughs> You yeah. Know, oh, so, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, just because it looks easy, I think the, the best artists can make some make an artwork that le looks easy and not belabored. And when I find that I look at my stuff that's been belabored and I'm like or embroidered or overdone, I just I say I'm not showing anybody. that. <laughs> I have mm. a burn pile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what okay. I'm, I'm really excited about is the uh, possibility of teaching online because I feel like I have a really solid, um, after almost 20, 19 years of teaching engineering students, I have a pretty solid way of um, explaining how to draw from life. And so um, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm going to get some more videos together. I've been, I started... Um, just kind of trying stuff out and um, asking people what they think, and I'm, I'm I'm moving in that direction. So, okay, fantastic. Do you have anything that's coming up that you'd like to uh, maybe let people know about, or working work on everybody find you online? Uh, my website is DebraMitchellArtist.com, and I have an Instagram account. And I have Deborah Mitchell Artist Facebook account. I have um, work in Gallery 613, which is a great gallery that just opened in downtown Rapid City, immediately across from the firehouse. Um, I have artwork up at um, Inside Out in Rapid City. I'm sorry, in Hill City. Um, I'm working on you know, a bunch of different things, proposals and... All right, so you're not hard to find. Also, there's the the doll website, and the events tab, Fcast, and uh, Deb's there. I'm there. Uh, there's uh, maybe what is there's there? Eleven. Eight? Eleven. Okay. Eleven. There's eleven artist videos. They're really nice. They're about two between two and four minutes long. Um, if you want to know what's going on in the hills as far as art, that's one place to start. And um, I want to thank Deb for hanging out. And I'm going to end the uh, broadcast, but hang around for a minute. And okay. we'll visit. Okay. okay. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>